Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to talk on one of the great topic and why it is great. And maybe some people might say, okay, this is not a great, but this is something we are not expecting at all, right? But this is the one where many organizations are not yet ready and even uh, companies who have legacy systems, legacy applications, legacy capabilities built in-house, those are running appropriately on those type of devices, right? Now, what I'm talking about is on Windows 10 devices, right? So Windows 10 devices are approaching towards the end of life or end of support from Microsoft side, right? Which is October 14, 2025, right? So this is an August 20th date. As of date today, I'm recording this one. And Microsoft is going to uh, put the, that on end of support, right? So how you can go ahead and take the appropriate actions, right? Either Microsoft is saying that you should uh, move or upgrade Windows 10 devices to Windows 11, which is going to be the next operating system. And many organizations are already moved. Some of them are moving and there are exception cases where business has a lot of different applications, which perfectly works on Windows 10 versions, but not on the Windows 11, right? Those could be the scenario or situations where organizations are not ready and to be able to be ready, they have to do a lot of uh, underground work on their existing systems, be it modernization, be it uh, authentication mechanisms, or be it any other upgrades on the existing systems altogether, right? And once they do that, then only it is going to work with the Windows 11 upon upgrade, right? But to do that, they have a lot of, they have to do a lot of investments there because they have to modernize uh, existing systems. They have to do the rework. They have to do maybe a re-architecting or pro probably refactoring and something like that and modernization as well. So all of those things would be there if if those are really the legacy systems, right? And Microsoft has brought one of the great capability, which is extended security updates for all those devices, all those uh, systems which are on Windows 10 22H2 version, right? Now, how this new update, which is extended security update is going to be available and update or provided it's available for all the customers. They can go ahead and purchase it for each of those devices. And even they can purchase it for a single device as well, if in case they wanted to try and maybe use it for one device at all, right? So how users or how organizations can do that, right? So there is this update available and they have made it available, but now you might be saying, why do we need to use that one, right? Why we can't use, but if our organization has a dependency on the legacy systems and if they move to Windows 11, then their systems or accessibility and everything is not going to work as expected the way it works on Windows 10 22H2 version, right? And that is why this is a great capability which allows organizations to extend their current Windows 10 capabilities, whatever it is, up to three years, right? So during that period, all these organizations can be ready and they can probably move to the modernization of their legacy systems or probably depending on their business and different use cases, they can simply take the appropriate access, right? So all of that would come in picture later. Right. So let me share my screen and I'll walk you through what is available there, how it can be purchased, how it is being deployed and how it can help organizations. Right. And now I'm talking about all those contexts where each organization has maybe more than 500 or thousands of uh, users. Right. Why? Because those are the organizations. They might have a lot of legacy systems, which works perfectly with Windows 10, 22 web. 22H2 versions, but not on the Windows 11, right? If they move to Windows 11, that is being crashed for those end users who are actually trying to access and do their job or perform their certain actions, right? It includes the developers, people who are actually working on developing and enhancing their in-house products, 
for their business customers and everything right and those are the scenarios and to resolve that problem microsoft has brought this extended security update capability right so that can be purchased and can be deployed across the devices right so let me share my screen here and i'll show you what i'm talking all about and probably you can just go through it upon your review all right so this is that one and before this page i am into the windows updates over here and you can see that this has prompted us or shown us a little prompt which shows windows 10 is reaching end of support on october 20 october 14 25 to stay protected upgraded to stay protected upgrade to windows 11 or purchase extended security updates right so if organizations are not ready to move to this one or upgrade to windows 11 then there is this capability which is extended security updates right so by using that one companies and businesses can still keep you utilizing and using windows 10 22 h2 right and then it's going to be available for them for next three years right so that's something which is been useful for all those customers and they wanted to keep it using for business and all those different scenarios right so this is the complete document or page i would say for windows 10 and it has a details about what are the prerequisites what are the limitations on this as well because extended does not include the following items so these are not available in general with this capability and there are some of the FAQs as well that you can simply go through and understand. And those are applicable to different service offerings as well. So you can go through it, understand it, which also includes uh, Windows 10 endpoints connecting to 365 cloud PCs will be entitled to ESU for up to three years, right? As I said, it's up to three years, then that's going to be available with the Windows with active Windows 365 subscription license, that's also possible to migrate from that version to this one, right? And you can simply go ahead and understand this one. And these are the FAQs to understand and let you know what are your potential questions, right? Now you might be wondering, will this Windows 10 PC stop working without ESU offerings, right? So it is going to work, but Microsoft is recommending customers to upgrade eligible PCs to Windows 11 using Auto Patch Intune or transition to new Windows 11 PC for the best with security and quality updates, right? If that is not going to be happening, then probably there won't be any security updates, quality updates, and there is no support as all at all, right? So that's going to happen. Also, there is option how we can go ahead and enable this one, right? So let's look at into it. So how you are going to enable this capability? So there are the prerequisites again, which you can simply understand what are those, which starts from Windows 10 version 22H2. Here is the KB article for that as well. And you can see later update installed with admin privileges on the device side. And you can read through, understand with this KB article, what is mentioned, what is available and how you can go ahead and take the appropriate actions, right? So, and there are certain endpoints for the client activations for on the individual level, but for the organizations, customers can simply buy and purchase volume licensing which is extended security updates licensing through Microsoft 365 portal over here, right? And then you can also see that where it is applicable, what are the scenarios, considerations to be made. And that is something each organizations can go ahead and take actions, right? So basis on that, you can understand what is really needed, how we can go ahead and procure it. Maybe we wanted to use it, right? So here's, here are the steps and simply you can go to this one, go to this portal and select the volume licensing tab, right? 
So let me open it up here. And in the contract section, select view contracts. And on the contracts page, find license ID that the ESU licenses were purchased under the three dots under more actions. And then it's going to give us details, right? So currently I don't have that one over here. And this tenant, because this is something is different tenant altogether. But if we or any organization or any customer who wanted to do that, they can simply go ahead and do that. But it's also very important to know what is available, what is possible, what is not possible. And all of that assessment is also needed to be able to go ahead and purchase this one, right? Because if you don't know what it is going to do, what it is going to provide and how it's going to help, probably then uh, that is going to be a question whether this is going to solve my particular problem, particular questions or how it is going to be, right? So that assessment needs to be done as well, right? And then there are other steps, how you can install and activate ESU keys, right? And then those are the steps you can go ahead and take one by one, right? So isn't this a great capability that is available as, as additional and another option for organizations to keep using Windows 10, but definitely it's going to uh, cost additional money for that. But there is something which organizations has to take a look into their current business requirements and infrastructure setup, which really works on Windows 10 devices. And then other side is going to be the Windows 10 extended security updates, right? Now let's take an example. Organization has an, a lot of stuff there in the on-premises, which really works on the legacy system, legacy platform, and which works on Windows 10 devices. But as soon as organization upgrades those devices to Windows 11, everything is not working as expected because users are facing issues on authentication. Users are not able to connect to the respective servers or respective applications where they are working, they need to deploy certain requirements of the applications and system needs to be up and date, up to date and provide the services to the customers and the business altogether, right? Now that's a big chaos, right? To resolve that, either organizations can stay on Windows 10 and keep it using, but again, Microsoft has put a date which is October 14, 25, where Windows 10 is going out of support, right? If that is going to happen, then the same situation will happen over here as well, right? So instead of doing that, Microsoft has given this solution, which is extended security update, which is going to be a really great one to keep using Windows 10 and let your business and applications and everything running until and unless you are not ready for next three years, right? Once once you decide whatever it is going to be, be it you are modernizing the platforms and systems that are running with Windows 10 perfectly without any issues, right? Now, there are different thoughts about it, whether we should really need to upgrade or we wanted to modernize our systems and platforms instead of using or keeping Windows 10 and move to Windows 11 and let, let it match with Windows 11 version. Right. So this is something there are different thoughts and discussions happening. And upon that, each organization is going to decide whether they wanted to move or they wanted to keep using it. And then probably they would come to the conclusion whether we should keep using Windows 10 and probably we can simply add some of the extended security updates and then we should be able to keep using for next three years at least. And then we can decide whether we really wanted to uh, keep using it. And if not, then we should modernize our platform, move it to the leg from the modern platform, from the legacy one, and which is going to be suitable for Windows 10 and above, uh, Windows 11 and above versions of operating systems, right? So those are the things which will keep happening. And if organizations are not ready, then this, is going to be the one where organization is going to be using or they need to use because Windows 10 is going to end up support. So there is no 
support and there is nothing available in order to be able to get the security and quality updates right so this is how it is going to be and i'm going to recommend you to go through this document and learn and understand about it right basis on that each organization is different it's unique and basis on that they can take the appropriate actions whether they should use extended security attribute uh, extended security updates for windows 10 or what right so they can decide what the steps they need to take further and also there is this one which is what's new in windows 10 so this is going to be giving the updates what's coming what is not and all of that but the main part of this is this one which is extended security updates right what is available what is not available how you can go about it what it is going to cost right that is also very important so here is the question how much does it does esu costs right so from here you can see that extended security for organizations and business on windows 10 can be purchased through microsoft volume license program at 61 us dollar per device for a year right so this is how it is going to be uh, available to purchase on this per price uh, per device price right and this can be used upon basis on the needs and requirements of the organization right because definitely the cost factor could be there for many organizations because they might think okay why we cannot uh, move out of windows 10 as it's already moving out of support right so let's switch to windows 11 and modernize our platform so that's going to be a kind of future investment and we will keep using modern platforms then modern devices and modern systems altogether we don't have to uh, keep using existing one which is already in a process to end of support right so yeah that's this is how it is going to be and each organization is going to think differently so based on that they are going to take different actions all right so yeah that is what i want you to talk and show you and let you know about this new capability or new i would say the new capacity that is available for organizations to use try and test and not only try and test but it's already available so that means every organization can use it right so yeah that is what i wanted to show you and talk about it hope you like it hope you learned something new uh, let me know if you have any questions doubt something like that and would be happy to answer those so yep don't forget to like this video share it to their friends people around you and subscribe to the channel as well so that you get to see every new video when it is available so yep that's all thanks for watching and bye for now